sorry. Were the wealthy, but only asking that I might fall. Wait, okay. I wasn't sure. Oh. Lord, when you came to the seashore, you weren't seeking the wise or the wealthy. shelter of the Lord who abide in his shadow for light. Say to the Lord, my refuge, my rock in whom I trust.
grace of our Lord Jesus, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In the waters of baptism, Henry died with Christ Jesus and rose with him to new life. May our brother now share with the Lord eternal life and joy. On the day of his baptism, our brother was clothed with Christ Jesus on the day of the Lord's return, may he be covered and clothed with life and light and glory. On the day of his baptism, Henry was signed with the cross of Jesus. May our brother now share in the Lord's victory over sin and death. Let us pray. Eternal God, you made the union of man and woman a sign of the bond between Christ Jesus and his church. Grant peace and mercy to Henry, who was united in love with his wife, Fran. May the care and devotion of his life here on earth find a lasting reward in heaven. Look kindly on Henry's wife, his children, his family, his friends, his co-workers, all gathered here together this morning as now they turn to your compassion and love. Deepen their faith, lighten their loss. Through Christ our Lord. Please be seated. We will now have the first reading from God's Word. A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, heard a voice from heaven say, Write this, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, said the Spirit, let them find rest from their labors, for their works accompany them. The word of the Lord. Shepherd me, O God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. God is my shepherd, so nothing shall I want. I rest in the meadows of faithfulness and love. I walk by the quiet waters of peace. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Gently you raise me, and 
and heal my weary soul. You lead me by pathways of righteousness and truth. My spirit shall sing the music of your name. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Surely your kindness and mercy follow me all the days of my life. I will dwell in the house of my God forevermore. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, saw a new heaven and a new earth. The former heaven and the former earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. I also saw the holy city, a new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband, I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, God's dwelling is with the human race. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will always be with them as their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. And there shall be no more death or mourning or wailing or pain. For the old order has passed away. The one who sat on the throne said, Behold, I will make all things new. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty, I will give a gift from the spring of life, giving water. The victor will inherit these gifts, and I shall be his God, and he will be my son. The word of the Lord. to die 
close to my word, keep faithful. For your faithfulness, I will give you eternal life. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Mary Magdalene stayed outside the tomb weeping, and as she wept, she bent over into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting there, one at the head and one at the feet where the body of Jesus had been. And they asked her, woman, why are you weeping? And she said to them, they have taken my Lord, and I don't know where they put him. When she had said this, she turned around and there saw Jesus, but she did not know that it was Jesus. He said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? She thought he was the gardener. And she said to him, sir, if you carried him away, tell me where you laid him, and I will take him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, stop holding on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and tell them, I am going to my Father and to your Father, to my God and your God. Mary went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and then reported what he had said to her. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to St. Nicholas. There is Mary doing what anyone would do when a beloved of one's dies. She's outside the tomb weeping. And it wasn't supposed to end like this. His disciples, some of them said, we thought he was the one. They had placed all their hopes. They had placed their future in his hands, this young rabbi from Nazareth. The one who went around announcing that the reign of God was here among us. The one who raised the dead, who gave sight to the blind, who cured those who were crippled. He was the one who was going to save Israel. They said to him, Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. And he had entered into the holy city to adoring crowds, and they were waving the palm branches and singing Hosanna in the highest. And in a few days, it all came to an abrupt end on that hill outside the city. And they put him in a tomb, and they rolled the stone over the entrance to the tomb. And when that stone was rolled over to the entrance of the tomb, on the other side was all of their hopes and their dreams and their future. The end had come, or so they thought. So they thought. And now Mary, heartbroken as anyone would be, she comes to that tomb and there's the the gardener. She didn't know who it was, but there was her Lord and her Savior. The stone had been rolled back 
And there was the one who had told them on a number of occasions, the Son of Man will be put to death and on the third day be raised up. But of course, those disciples, like many disciples right down to our own day, they were too busy thinking about all other kinds of stuff, like who was going to get the most important spot in the kingdom of God. But yet, just as Jesus had foretold, just as he had promised, there he was, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the author of life, who by his dying put death to death. And the words out of the risen Lord Jesus, in one account, they're words that were spoken to Mary, and the words that are spoken to us, his disciples today. Don't be afraid. And there are so many things that we might be frightened of. We're frightened of living. We're frightened of dying. We're frightened of falling in love. We're frightened when we fall out of love. But the risen Lord who spoke those words to Mary speaks those words to us today. Don't be afraid. And then on that first day of the week, in that, the evening of that first day, the disciples, the ones who thought the party was over, they went in and they locked the doors, and there he stood in their midst. And he said the words to them that he speaks to us today as we gather to entrust our brother Henry to our loving Father. The risen Lord said to them, he says to us, peace be with you. The peace that the world can't give, the peace that only God can give, the peace that allows us to face the present, face the future, face dark clouds, face those elements of life that we don't think are bearable, but the risen one continues to offer us that gift of peace. The risen one, Jesus, Lord and God, he made that promise and we hold him to that promise. He said, I will be with you until the end of the age. And in so many different ways, the Lord, the author of life, Jesus who once was dead, but who now lives among us, he makes his presence known in our coming here together, speaking words of comfort and hope and peace. The one who offers us his own body and blood in Holy Communion. The one who was with Henry from the very first moment of his life on earth. The one who walked along with Henry when he went about, as did our Lord and Savior, going about doing good, spreading love, being patient, being kind, being gentle. Henry, who in a way mirrored the life of the Lord Jesus by his willingness not to put his own well-being first, but who always put the well-being of others. His wife, Fran, 49 and a half years. Brendan and Katie. Stefan and Ashley and of course Henry and Tessa how many people were touched by the work that Henry Moriarty carried out in his life you know in the book of Revelation from which Katie read this morning just a couple sentences but we were reminded that for those who die in the Lord all of their good deeds go along with them. And that might seem to go against the grain. You know, we always say, you can't take it with you. No, you can't take the car. You can't take the house. You can't take your degree. But what we can and do and will take with us into the kingdom are those countless acts, the work of love, the work of being a devoted husband and 
father and Grampy, a devoted coach, a devoted co-worker, whether it was at Marymount on the hill or over here at Hoban or over here at Holy Redeemer, whether it was on the football field or the baseball diamond, no matter where Henry went, there he was at work mirroring the life of Jesus by his life of love and concern and patience and a willingness to be of presence, of willingness to be of service in the most loving, gentle, patient way. Henry left us so unexpectedly. This isn't the way we would want it to be, huh? Maybe like Mary and those other disciples, we would have preferred that we had time to say things that are now hidden in our hearts. Maybe one more I love you, or all those sentiments that are hallmarks of our life together as, as family and friends and co-workers. But God took Henry so unexpectedly, and there is that hole in our hearts as we read in the paper. There's that space that will probably never be fi filled by anyone, but hopefully that empty space in hearts will be filled with that peace, that firm assurance, that firm knowledge, that as we pray in the Eucharistic prayer, because of Jesus, because of his dying and his rising, because of the fulfillment of that promise that he makes to us again and again and again, for God's faithful people, life does not end. It's changed. There's sadness in the parting. There's no doubt about that. But brothers and sisters, even as our tears flow freely, we are people of faith. We are people who have been shown that it is, it's the light and not the darkness that's going to have the final word. It is not death, but it is the gift of eternal life, which is our destiny, which is the Lord's promise to us, which is what we know for sure Henry is enjoying to the fullest, even as we send him home to the Father. Until we all meet again, there probably, I, I can say this without any doubt, there will be, there'll be sad days, but there will be so many happy, wonderful memories of a loving father and husband and grampy and brother and coworker that will offer comfort and peace as we, as you begin to live in a, in a new way. Perhaps I lived in a deprived childhood. I never read Dr. Seuss. I don't know if I'm allowed to mention his name at this point. But there is a little quote, and it went something like this, and you might well know it. You know, don't, I was, don't cry because it's over. Smile because it happened. We cry, our hearts are broken, because we didn't want things to come to this point. If we had our druthers, oh, we would wish that Henry was with us on earth for many more years. And there surely is sadness in the parting. But as God's people, as people of faith, let us smile because Henry Moriarty has been part of our life for 75 years, and he will continue to be part of the lives of family and friends as you continue to live out your mission and your life and your work in this world. There are gonna be so many things that hopefully will make you smile when you dive into a piece of broccoli pizza, or maybe when you break open a bag of uh, M&M's, peanut M&M's. When it's baseball season, when it's football season, so many things. When you start looking through books that he loved to read, Fran. When you go to a flea market or maybe when you're downstairs quilting or making afghans. 
there are going to be all those little things that hopefully will make you and your heart smile until that day when all of us together will once again be with Henry, when together we will see God face to face, that day when we will sit and share in that, that banquet of life that Jesus prepared for him, that the Lord has prepared for us all. And so it is with utter trust and utter sincerity that we offer a prayer for Henry this morning, one that we are so familiar with, but one that we just know will be answered and fulfilled. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. May he rise in glory. Now in the general intercessions and the prayer of the faithful, we will pray for the needs of all God's people. If you would respond, Lord, hear our prayer. In baptism, Henry received the light of Christ. Scatter the darkness now and lead him over the waters of death. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Our brother, Henry, was nourished at the table of the Savior. Welcome him into the halls of the heavenly banquet. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Many friends and members of our families have gone before us, especially Armadine and Edward Moriarty, Mary Ellen Thomas, Patrick J. Moriarty Sr., Yannick Moriarty, Walter and Anna Jubieg, and Kevin Lawson, and await the kingdom. Grant them an everlasting home with you, son. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For the former and current students and athletes of Bishop Hoban and Holy Redeemer, we pray through the intervention of St. Sebastian, patron saint of athletes, for their continued safety throughout the pandemic and for the future academic and professional successes. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Those who trusted in the Lord now sleep in the Lord. Give refreshment, rest, and peace to all those whose faith is known to you alone. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We gather together all our prayers. We offer them to you, dear Father, through Christ our Lord. Please be seated. the seashore you weren't seeking the wise or the wealthy but only asking that I might follow oh Lord in my eyes you were gazing 
kindly smiling, my name you were saying. All I treasured, I have left on the sand there, close to you, I will find other seas. My friends, pray now that our sacrifice will be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. O oh Lord, look favorably on our offerings so that your departed servant, Henry, may be taken up into glory with your son in whose great mystery of love we have all been united through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, almighty, eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him, the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality. Indeed, for your faithful people, Lord God, life is changed, not ended. And when our earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal home is made ready for them in heaven. And so with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes, who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. And therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord God, 
the bread of life, and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the earth and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Henry, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may be one with him in resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with her beloved husband, Joseph, with the apostles, with St. Nicholas, with Blessed Pauline, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 As children of light, we are able to pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and be safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, you who live and reign forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. We offer some sign of peace. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be ever at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face. May the rains fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the hollow of his hand. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the hollow, in the hollow of his hand. sins of the world have 
have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold Jesus, the Lamb once slain, who now lives forever, Blessed are those called to share in the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. And he will raise you up on eagle's wings, bear you on the breath of dawn, make you to shine like the sun, and hold you in the palm of his hand. For two angels he's given command to guard you in all of your ways. Upon their hands they will bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. And he will raise you up on eagle's wings, bear you on the breath of dawn. May to shine like the sun and hold you in the palm of his hand and hold you hold you in the palm of his hand
channel of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me bring your love. Where there is injury or pardon, Lord. And where there's doubt, true faith in you. Make me a channel of your peace. Where there's despair in life, let me bring hope. Where there is darkness, only light. And where there's sadness, ever joy. Oh, Master, grant that I may never seek so much to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love with all my soul. Make me a channel of your peace. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned, in giving of ourselves that we receive, and in dying that we're born to eternal life. I apologize if this is a bit long. I know my dad would have been perfectly happy with me coming up here and saying he was a good guy, he liked pizza, he liked football, go Notre Dame, and I like them a lot, but he deserves so much more. My dad, Henry, was a man of many nicknames, so I'd like to give one last history lesson, since he was a history teacher, to explain how each one of them reflects a different aspect of his beautiful life and backstory. Today we'll be using the American history textbook entitled a good man, the post-war years, 1945 to, to 2021. Chapter one, Henri, or Henry. My dad was born in Rennes, France, and came to America with my nana, Armadine, who smuggled his baptismal jewelry and cloves of garlic in his diaper before boarding the boat. They set out for a life unknown in America, or they would plant roots in Alexandria, Virginia. My dad ran the mean streets of the Cameron Valley section of town, where to this day he could still recite who lived in which apartment and always laughed about just how many kids lived on the block in the baby boom years. He loved his brothers and sisters so deeply, especially Pat, who after 50, nearly 50 years, he never got over losing. When my brother or I might complain about not getting to do this or that activity or were jealous of some kid's school vacation, he would remind us that his summer vacations involved having to collect bottles and cans for money so that all six of them could pay to go to the pool in town, and that would shut us right up. He also loved attending police boys camp because it was free for families of five or more and told many stories of the hijinks that they would get up to there. He shared that love of summer camp with me for which I am forever grateful. And he never said no when I asked if I could go for another week of summer camp, even if it was a bit of a financial stretch. He attended St. John's College High School in Washington, D.C. and graduated in 1963. He always told me, I have no idea how your Nana sent me to such an expensive high school, but he was always so grateful for it. In fact, he never received his diploma until the late 80s. He had always thought that my Nana had lost the diploma, there was still an outstanding balance 25 years later on his tuition. He loved telling stories of his fellow classmates and parties and the strict but incredibly supportive Christian brothers who never missed someone goofing off. My dad was so proud of his family and his mom, who he called Manu. He'd been missing her a lot lately, for those of you who follow my dad on Facebook. He's been posting about her a lot. And as sad as I am, as we all are, I'm trying to take solace in knowing that he's with his favorite four foot nine Breton lady. Chapter two, Haji. A prouder King's alumnus has never walked this earth. 
His football boy started calling him Hudgy at the beginning of his days on the football team and it stuck. I hope that someone can someday tell me how it came about. He loved to tell stories about utter nonsense and shenanigans he and his buddies and roommates would get, would get up to and, all, and a whole host of football teammates would get into. Some I never got to hear the endings of because they were probably inappropriate for his children to hear. But he, I remember him talking a lot about a boda bag filled with wine that would be shared for pre-gaming purposes so you can come to your own conclusions about what happened during those stories. He recounted numerable times throughout of his life in the Hotel Sterling when it was partly used as a king's dormitory. He talked about the crystal ballroom and its giant chandelier as if it was the Palace of Versailles. He told me so many stories about dances at the lake, team bus rides, brother this and brother that, the time he cruised through college French with a cool D minus despite having a French mother, and his times in the Usher Society where he and others would serve as pallbearers for hire to earn a few extra bucks for a frosty beverage at the Treasure Island conveniently located in the lobby of the Hotel Sterling. Chapter three, Hen. That's my, mom, my mom's nickname for him. It's funny how as someone's kid, the older you get, the more you realize just how much you don't know about your parents and the lives they lead before you came along. You, of course, know the general biography, but what you might not know is how my mom and dad were obsessed with ordering pizza and watching The Love Boat every Saturday for years, or how they took disco lessons, disco dancing lessons together, or how my mom and dad went to the Marymount High School prom after he learned that she had never been to her own high school prom, or how my dad called my mom Bougie or Bush because it, may, it means kiss in Polish, or how my mom got my dad into crafting. He was an epic yarn pom-pom maker, even making the giant tassels for the color guard boots back in the 70s. Or no matter how mad my mom would get at my dad, it was his get out of jail free card. He would start telling her an Andrew Dice Clay joke that goes something like this. Little Miss Muffet sat on her tuffet, eating her curds and whey. Along came a cider and sat down beside her and said, What's in the bowl? I'm in church, I can't say the rest. <laughs> or how now in retirement, my mom and dad would meet for lunch every single day. Well, not every single day. Wednesdays were sacred because that's when he met with his lunch bunch. Each week, this group of uh, Kings alum that played for the 1970 national championship team would get together each week and pick a different restaurant spot. And my dad always loved telling me what new place he tried or what place closed down, and he loved that. My mom and dad would meet at Wendy's or Red Subs in Lake Silkworth or Mickey D's or Morris's. My dad always loved, always had my mom's engagement picture in his wallet because he loved her so deeply and was her biggest source of strength, defender, and supporter. There is no greater sin in my father's eyes than mouthing off to my mother. That's how high of a pedestal she was on. Chapter four, coach, Hank, Mr. Moriarty. My dad was a good coach. He was a kind colleague. He was a great teacher. He was the biggest supporter of his students, fellow teachers and athletes, no matter the achievements on the field. Don't get me wrong. He cursed the TV at the TV when the Redskins or Notre Dame fumbled or lost a game. He'd reminisce about football games, fellow referees, and empires every time we'd bump into somebody out in town. I'd ask him who that was, and instantly he could spout out their stats from 40 years ago, what their best game was, their family tree, you name it. He'd always end with saying, he's a real good guy. Might be a bit of a goof sometimes, but he's a good guy. For those who knew him as Hank, his original Hoban crew, so many of whom we were so blessed to have seen last night, he loved, I mean really loved that school. I could still see him standing in the hallway talking to his students, razzing one up about having his shirt being slightly untucked, or telling them to hurry up because they knew that the next teacher might not be forgiving of being late. He always had the latest gossip of the school, but he never shared it with me no matter how many times I tried to pry it out of him. I even had him for American history one year, and I remember him calling on a different student each day to come up with a saint to pray for, his, for the intervention. He loved the community of the school, what it represented for his faith, his passion for history, and being a mentor to future generations. Last night, meeting so many former students, hearing what a mentor my dad was to so many people was an absolutely beautiful experience. 
Chapter 5. Dad. Daddy-o. Our dad loved us ferociously. He knew that we knew. He always talked about how lucky he was to have had a little girl and then a little boy and that nothing in the world could be better. Now he's got a son-in-law and a future daughter-in-law to match that set too. In fact, when we spoke last Thursday as we were hanging out, we were hanging up and saying, I love you. He even threw in, tell Stefan I love him too, like he always used to do. And Ashleen, he called you a good egg and said that you must be holy because you have the patience of a saint to put up with bread. <laughs> when I was a very little kid, I had this little cookie monster figurine that my dad would set up high on the shower curtain rod when he was giving me a bath. And he would flick it off so it nose dive in the tub and he would yell, cookie, to get me to laugh. And to this day, whenever he was visiting and saw a cookie in a bakery, he'd lean over to me and say, cookie, to get a laugh. Or how my dad would leg wrestle with us for hours in the living room in front of the TV. And his trick move was called the shaky leg, where he would suddenly make one leg shake so hard and so fast that he'd end, end up winning the match for making us laugh so hard that we would fall over. He was a kid at heart through and through. He got so excited about new nifty toys and kids' movies and always told, told us that his sense of humor never aged beyond age 12. We loved to watch our neighbor's fireworks together and, and made these dramatic and ridiculously over-the-tops ahs and oohs. And we'd go through all the vowel sounds, so not just ah and ooh, but ah, eh, e, o, oh, ooh. It was our little inside joke. And this past New Year's Eve, little Henry's birthday, he did the same thing for us over the phone in Germany. He gave the best hugs. We had our own secret hug handshake that I will so desperately miss. I will make sure I start doing it with my own kids. My dad beamed and sometimes grumbled every time he watched Brendan play any sport he tried. He always said he felt a little bad that he gave Brendan his short French jeans because he had such great athletic talent, but he was always just a few inches <laughs> Too short. Brendan, he loved that you were so eager to try all sports and he encouraged you in everything that you played. And he was so proud of the work that you're doing now as an athletic trainer. Many of the comments and cards that we've been receiving over the past week said that I might not have known your dad, but I know you and it takes a really special guy to raise a really special guy like you. First time I saw my dad cry was one morning when I was about 10 or 11 and I found him sitting on the couch in his underwear one morning, sobbing, big, heaving tears. And I thought, oh God, who passed away? I looked at the TV. He was watching the ending of Rudy after seeing the little guy achieve something so big in his eyes. Our dad was always our first line of defense, your linebackers in the second line. Now he's our safety covering the whole field. Now that he's been traded up to a better team, it's up for us to carry on the pigskin of his legacy through my kids and any other future grandchildren. Chapter six, Grampy. My dad always told me that if his dad had been alive when my brother and I were born, we wouldn't have learned to walk until we were five because he would have never put us down. Well, I got to see that in action with my little ones, Henry and Tessa. My dad loved his grandkids to the ends of the earth and back. Though we didn't get to see each other in person so much in the last few years because of the distance, he more than made up for that time in between by huggling the kiddos every time he saw them and spoiling them rotten with giant care packages he and my mom would send every month. And when we were together, it was like we had never been apart at all. He loved to sneak the kids candy before I could stop him or let them watch more TV than I ever would. And he would kiddingly yell at my mom for not sharing the pictures or videos that I would send fast enough. In August 2019, we went on a family trip to Brittany. My kids, my parents, my husband and I drove to France to attend the Interceltic Festival, something we'd been wanting to do for years. We spent two weeks listening to live Celtic music, visiting the wild Breton coast, visiting spots of historical importance to the family. But most importantly, really, Grampy got to spend a lot of time playing games with his Henry and Tessa and hugging up on them and just watching them be kids. At the end of the service, and at the cemetery, we will be giving him one last live show on the way out the door. The last time we were home before COVID hit was Christmas 2019. 
I flew home with my kids early, purposely to make it in time for the Twinboro Lions Club Christmas party, because my mom said, it doesn't matter what the flights cost, if it's extra, you have to be here. It'll be the biggest highlight of his year to, for him to, get, to show off his little ones to his Lions guys. And it was. The man's cheeks must have hurt for days because of the smile it put on his face. Prologue. I know as I attempt to wrap up this history lesson, I will have missed many important points and emotions that I would like to have conveyed. But I know my dad is already mumbling under his breath. Come on, Kate, wrap this up. The number of stories that my dad could, could tell can now only be surpassed by the many stories of this man, which will continue to be told and retold out at large to the thousands of lives he has touched across the world, whose life was so much richer and had much more far-reaching impact than we could have ever imagined. The outpouring of support in person last night and online has been truly beautiful and overwhelming. So I'll leave you with one last homework assignment. Eat my dad's power pills, AKA the mini M&Ms that we gave, peanut M&Ms we gave you. Share a story about my dad or one of his bad dad jokes with someone who could use a pick me up because he wouldn't want any of us to be too sad for too long. Oh, hey, and Fran, while you're up, give my little ones a bougie and my big ones too. I love you, daddy-o. If you'll please join me, I will recite the Hail Mary in French, but you can say it in English. Je vous salue, Marie, pleine de grâce. Le Seigneur est avec vous. Vous êtes bénie entre toutes les femmes, et Jésus, le fruit de vos entrailles, est béni. Sainte Marie, Mère de Dieu, priez pour nous, pauvres pécheurs, maintenant et à l'heure de notre mort. Amen. Let us pray. O oh Lord, grant that your servant Henry, for whom we have celebrated this Paschal Sacrament, may pass over now to a dwelling place of light and joy and peace. Through Christ our Lord. I'm sure that Fran and Katie and Brendan are so honored that all of you came to celebrate this Eucharist this morning. So on their behalf, I thank you all. A special word of appreciation to uh, fellow faculty members, maybe former or present from may, perhaps Marymount or Hoban or Redeemer. And we're glad that and honored to have uh, students from Holy Redeemer, leading us in prayer and also serving as the honor guard. So uh, Holy Redeemer students, thank you for being here with us this morning. Trusting in God, we have prayed together for Henry and now we come to the final farewell. And there surely is sadness in the parting but we take comfort in the sure and certain hope that one day we will see him again to enjoy his love and company and friendship. Even though we are going to leave here this morning in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joys of the kingdom. And so let us continue to comfort and console and encourage one another in the faith of Jesus the Lord. There will be no more darkness, there is no more night, no more night. There will be no more sadness, only joy and light, joy and light. Lift your eyes beyond the hills and see the dawn. There is beautiful mercy in the arms of the Holy 
into your hands, Father of mercies. We commend our brother Henry in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ Jesus, he will rise again with him on the last day. We thank you, dear God, for all the blessings that you gave him in this life. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and hear our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain here to comfort one another with assurances of faith until that day when we all meet again in Christ and are with you and our brother forever. Henry, may the angels lead you into paradise. May the martyrs run out to welcome you and lead you into your new home in the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. May choirs of angels sing you on your way and lead you to the bosom of Father Abraham. And where Lazarus is poor no longer, may you now enjoy eternal light and joy and peace. And now filled with the gift of peace, the peace that only God can give. With love and reverence, let us take the body of our brother to a final place of rest. Out of the several come this one, Taking a place second to none, first in learning, first in esprit, first in a hopeful unity. Our youthful hearts have standards true, we've soaring goals in all we do. Strong lives enriched with love, our aim and hope and banner now we claim. 